Hey YouTube World Harvest, there's plenty of hope all as well. Thanks for stopping by to check out the video. Please don't forget to hit or smash that like button for me. I really appreciate your support, so thank you. Um, in early 2023, around January, February of 2023, I put out a video on my old channel. For those of you who followed the old channel, I'm sure you remember it. Klaus Schwab and his second in command at the World Economic Forum, they both said that within a two year time frame or a two year period, that a catastrophic cyber attack would hit the world. This was 2023. If you add two years to that, that's the beginning of 2025. And I wasn't the only one that actually reported about this. There was a gentleman who did a video a couple of months ago, and he was kind of reporting the exact same thing. Well, the World Economic Forum, yes, run by Klaus Schwab, the World Economic Forum says that we will experience a massive cyber attack that will hit before the year 2025, which will lead to a massive collapse of the banking industry, infrastructure, and so much more. How, how do they know this? It's unbelievable. So yes, it's very crazy and unbelievable. The director of the World Economic Forum, his name is Jeremy Jurgens. He said that it was a 93% probability that it was gonna take place within the next two years. 93% chance that it was gonna take place within the next two years. That's a very high probability. And so they're most likely uh, planning it. I'm sure they're preparing for it, which is why Klaus Schwab decided to step down. Um, and I did a video about that as well. More predictions coming out of Davos. Another prediction, promise or threat? There's gonna be a big cyber attack. We're here today to share the findings of the World Economic Forum's uh, Global Security Outlook uh, report 2023. This is a result of uh, research in collaboration with the forum's communities and our partner Accenture, in which we've uh, interviewed and sought input from over 300 executives globally. The most striking finding that we found is that 93% of cyber leaders and 86% of cyber business leaders believe that the geopolitical instability makes a catastrophic cyber event likely in the next two years. A catastrophic cyber event is likely in the next years. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Are these people going to stop it? If they, if they can't stop it, they're, they don't seem quite so omnipotent as they present themselves. So let's focus on this RAND report, this RAND simulation called Inverted Rook. It says here the U.S. is unprepared for attacks on critical infrastructure, RAND simulation. So let's go through this real quick. It says, like Cyber Polygon, RAND's inverted rook war game warns of catastrophic cyber attacks leading to societal breakdown. Perspective. The United States is unprepared for attacks on critical infrastructure, according to a war game simulated by the RAND Corporation. Prepare for the head of the U.S. spy community, the Office of Director of National Intelligence, the RAND report defending the United States against critical infrastructure attacks exploring a hypothetical campaign of cascading impacts details a war game from earlier this year called inverted rook which simulated multiple attacks on critical infrastructure the authors note that although this scenario is a hypothetical use case of a future adversarial campaign it is based on real world examples that have targeted communications financial ser financial services healthcare municipal services energy transportation and water all right, let's read a little bit more. It goes on to say uh, the United States government and other critical infrastructure stakeholders are not postured to successfully address multiple simultaneously attacks on U.S. infrastructure. And this is an uh, inverted report June 20, 2024. It goes on to say this. In this, in this fictional scenario, the motivation behind the simulated attacks was to interrupt U.S. involvement in a conflict overseas by creating havoc, chaos, and mayhem on American soil through a combination of physical and cyber attacks on critical infrastructure. These include physical attacks on electric, electrical substations, and we have seen that. I did a video about that. Uh, ransomware attacks on government services, malware attacks on power grids, disruptions in transportation, Hackers remotely poisoning water treatment facilities. Didn't the EPA just come out and speak about that? And cyber attacks on Wall Street. And we know that the financial and banking systems will 
be hit and they will go down. It goes on to say, because of the interconnected nature of critical infrastructure systems, it is probable that damage to one system will adversely affect another. It continues, the ripple effect from each attack, either simultaneously or one after another, will lead to government services being shut down, power outages affecting hospitals, transportation, refrigeration, heating, etc., sickness and death from poisoned water, hypothermia, hmm, exposure, civil unrest, etc., financial services being disrupted, meaning no banking, no ATMs, none of that stuff, uh, splitting factions between those blaming domestic extremists, foreign adversaries, and their own government. An inside job, right? And the inability of government to go after foreign adversaries in order to deal with all the domestic chaos. The report continues and says, according to Rand, the adversary uses a variety of tactics to create an atmosphere of mistrust in government, sow tensions among the general populace, saturate the news media, and totally consume the target state's political bandwidth to reach its ultimate goal of preventing, delaying, or constraining the U.S. response to the adversary's actions abroad. Additionally, attacks intended to forestall a U.S. response to aggression overseas could create fear among the general public undermine social cohesion and paralyze political decision-making structures. And so what that was just talking about is, uh, for example, let's say that China decides to hit and take over Taiwan. Before China decides to make their move, they're going to knock out America first. They have operatives here. Remember the sheriff from Butler County? He said that China has a safe house in every state. We've seen uh, there's over 20 million people who've come across the board over three years. Um, if you go back and count the last 10 years, probably 50 million. And we know they have a large number of Chinese guys here, Russian guys, Jordanians, uh, Middle Eastern guys here. Uh, they just arrested, they said, eight ISIS members from Tazakistan or wherever that's called, wherever it's called. Um, and we've seen the Chechens at Fort Bragg uh, taking pictures of special forces and their families. So a lot of people are here um infrastructure takedown guys and so america's not ready but what's surprising to me uh, not really surprising is that the american population is not ready and it sucks because in 2023 they started making these announcements that they said within two years it will go down and so we've had two years time frame to get ready for this stuff god has granted us grace and mercy and allowed us the time to get prepared. And a lot of people did nothing during those two years. And granted, there are those who never heard about any of this stuff. And then there are those who like, hey, nothing has never happened in the past. This is just the government and everybody crying wolf. You know, nothing never happened in the past. Nothing is not going to happen now. And so they're not, they're not prepared at all. They're going to wait until the power goes out. They're going to wait until... The emergency alerts come across our cell phone saying you have one hour before the power goes out as if that's going to happen. We're not going to get a warning like that. I don't believe. So, guys, just just prepare. Please get ready. Um, it's a lot of unknowns that could happen when the power goes out. For example, think about all the people that live in your neighborhood are in a half a mile within you, just a half a mile within you, within your house, within uh, a half a mile within your apartment complex or wherever you live at. Right. Your neighbors, everybody, right? Neighborhoods over the next from you. How many of those people are on are on type are on any type of medication or drugs? We're talking diabetes, cholesterol, insulin. Uh, you know, it could be medicine like bipolar medicine, uh, medicine for cancer. I mean, medicine for anything. A lot of people are on a whole bunch of different types of medication. When the power goes out, CVS. Walgreens, Rite Aid, all the pharmacies, they're going to go, they're going to shut down. They're going to shut their doors. They're going to send their workers home to be with their family. So where are all these people going to get medicine from? So it's going to be a lot of sick people um, stuck in their homes, don't have any medication. They're going to be stressed out. They're going to be worried. Um, if the power happens to go out during this summer, during this heat wave, a lot of people are going to die just, you know, just basically from heat stroke. You know, and if it happens during the winter, 
hypothermia. But you have to be prepared for those things. And not just you. Talk to your neighbor. Talk to your family. Get prepared, guys. Like this predictive programming that they're doing. I mean, every month, every week, they're warning about cyber attacks. We've seen cell phones go down. 911 systems go down. Hospitals get attacked. Uh, United Healthcare got attacked. I mean, it's, it's something happening like every week or every other week. Um, it's just a matter of time before the big one hits. And remember, once it happens, there's no do-overs. There's no do-overs. You can't say, oh, let's do it over again because I forgot to get some gas on my generator. Or I forgot to go out and get candles or matches or trash bags. Or I forgot to get enough canned goods, enough soup and tuna and whatever else you need to get. It's no do-over, guys. And I know money is tight for a lot of people. Um, as I said before in one of my other videos, you can prep at uh, the dollar store. Also, there are food banks. You guys can go to the food banks and to the local churches that distribute food and pick up food from there. It's free food. It's not the best of things, but you can still use that to stock your pantry. Because when you're starving and you haven't eaten in three or four or five days, everything tastes good. And so you won't be worrying about whether or not it's gluten free or not. You're going to be hungry and you're going to need to replace your calories and get some protein in your body. So prepare now um, before it goes down, guys. That's all I have for you today. Love you. Talk to you soon. God bless to you and your family.